you're certainly known as the quintessential New England caller. And what is that style? What mm-hmm. makes it a New England square? Uh, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't call myself quintessential. I, I don't think I'm at the point where I could define the style single-handed. You know, uh, Ted Sinella was known as the dean of New England Colors and Ralph Page before him. And I don't think there has been a dean since Ted died. I, I, don't, I think it's more of a collegial position. We're all doing our part to keep it going. But there are certainly some, some features that, that pop up over and over again, things that to me make a dance peculiarly New England. Well, Northeastern in general and New England in particular, uh, I think the the dances of the Northeast, um, New England, uh, New York State, parts of Pennsylvania, um, New Jersey, and probably some of the mid-Atlantic states, although I'm not as familiar with them, Bob could probably say more, but Northeastern in general, uh, the, the dancing is pretty well phrased to the music almost anywhere you go. Um, for the most part, I think traditional Northeastern dances tend to be singing calls and have been since the 1930s or, or a little earlier. Uh, and even if they're not singing calls, they're, they're treated as if they were. Uh, a, 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 it might be, not be a popular song that everybody knows. It might be a fiddle tune like Crooked Stovepipe but the the dance figure will begin at the beginning of the tune and it will end at the end of the tune like a contra dance or like a quadrille Uh, so whether it's sung or not it's very very closely wedded to the music so that's that's one of the the two biggest things in my mind the other one is that the dance revolves around swinging no pun intended uh, that the swings are longer and more prominent than they are in other regional styles um, Ricky Holden, I think it was, said that in Eastern square dancing, you go somewhere and swing someone. Uh, in Texas dancing, you go somewhere and do a do si do, a four-handed or, or six-handed or eight-handed series of hand turns. And that's the, the dominant move in Texas dancing as the swing is in the Northeast. Huh. So the, the swings, an eight-count swing in the Northeast would be considered a short swing and most dances uh, the swing would be uh, between 8 and 16 counts, where in, in the South and the West, as I understand it, uh, it would be between 4 and 8 counts normally. So the, the long swings and the, the close relation with the music would, would be, to me, the defining characteristics of a Northeastern dance. What we think of is a very common structure, which is an intro and then, a, and then a figure repeated twice and a break and a figure repeated twice and something at the end. Uh-huh. Is that, where, where, does that, where does that come from? I mean, is, that, is that a remnant of these five, five figures? Or? Um, I would say um, there were some figures that were fairly modern in feel. The fifth figure of the Lancers in particular, uh, right from the start in the 18-teens, uh, I think 1817 was the year that the, the original Lancers was introduced in London and Paris. Um, and the, the first four figures were short, you know, under two minutes. But the fifth figure was longer, you know, three or four minutes, about comparable to a, a typical New England style square now. And it was a, a 32 measure figure with each couple leading uh, with a 16 measure chorus in between. So it, it, was, it was getting up there in length. And I think traditionally, in, in the Northeast in general, um, it was traditional for the caller to call the first couple out, whether it was a visiting square or a, across the hall. Maybe the heads would do it, and, or the first couple would lead, and the heads would get involved. Uh, figure for the, the, the first combination of couples, then a chorus, then a figure for the next combination of couples, then a chorus. So there'd be a chorus after every figure. So it would be introduction, figure chorus, figure chorus, figure chorus, figure chorus, and maybe an extra ending in addition to the last chorus, and maybe not, maybe the the normal chorus would end it. Uh, I think, and I don't um, don't have solid backing for this, but I, I, I have a hunch that the, what we see now with the seven times through the tune and the, chorus, figure, figure, chorus, figure, figure, chorus, 
uh, with the figure done twice in a row each time. I'm guessing that the what became the modern square dance movement uh, influenced um, the Tensinella traditional modern New England style of dancing and calling. Um, I think what happened was that it was traditional in Western style to have a chorus after every figure and when when they started uh, recording and releasing these dances on 10 inch 78 rpm records there was only time for three and a half minutes of music and which is about seven times through the tune so the the callers in order to get all four figures on the record would skip the chorus after the first couple and after the third couple the other ploy that they used was to to call elaborate dances for the first and second couple with a long figure followed by a chorus for each one and then tell people to play the record over again for the third and fourth couple and so there there are examples of that but uh, as often as not they would just skip a couple of choruses so that they could cram everything on on one side and not have people have to play the record or turn it over in order to get one dance in uh, as i said i'm not sure of this i i, I can't prove it but uh, it, based on you know, just reading this stuff and listening to the records, looking at the, um, what was the norm in the books of the 1940s, uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that, that that's how it happened. And that again, the West influenced the East uh, in this respect, as in the, the calling styles.